Hey everybody, I'm Dan. This is the Ravenbrook Farmstead and we are in my barn. This is the upper floor of our barn and it has come a long way. You'll notice I'm rolling around on a wheelie chair and this would not have been possible when we moved into this house. It would have been uh, a really wild ride and getting it to this point has been a wild ride. So this floor is flat. And if you watched our last video, you, you will know how incredible it is that this floor is flat. <laughs> if you saw our house walkthrough, you maybe saw the original floor in here and you'll be amazed at how this floor is flat. It's like flat, like it's level, like, like really, really level. Like look, it's, it's awesome. So I'm, I'm super stoked about where we've come with this. Unfortunately, I didn't really know we'd be doing YouTube. At least not to the extent that uh, we have been in the past month or so, and things have really taken off, and I'm really grateful that you guys seem to like our house, you like what we're doing. That's all super cool. Uh, but I didn't really document the whole process of getting here very well. So today's project is gonna be talking about what we did, uh, how we got here, and maybe a little bit of background about who I am and where we're going with this. If you find that interesting, stick around. So, this barn is 700 square feet basically on, on both floors. You know, it's just a, it's a square, it's a barn. We got two floors. When we got here, it was a complete mess. It was all wonky all over the place. The supports, nothing, nothing matched up, nothing was even. It's like a 200 year old barn. I mean, it's probably built 160 years ago, but the wood in it is older than that. And the, the construction in some ways was good, sometimes compromised, sometimes, you know, it's all over the place. There's, there's crazy things that have happened over the years. Our goal when we moved here, you know, Natalie moved here for a job. I was working online, I'm still working online. So a little bit of background about me to give this context. Uh, I was trained as a musician, decided I didn't want that life, classical musician. Uh, I was working as a personal trainer to make ends meet and then that just became my full thing. And I love fitness, I love helping people with their health, I love the whole process of it but I absolutely cannot stand like the fitness industry and working at gyms and that whole thing. So my goal was to someday open a studio of my own where I can do my own thing and I can uh, have kind of like a, a real personal body positive, you know, really grassroots oriented, community oriented kind of fitness situation. That's what I'm into, that's what I wanted to create, but it's difficult to find the space, you know, the, the overhead and the risks involved and all of that. So when we're looking at a house, I was like, well, it'd be really cool if I could have a space in the house that would serve that purpose. And then we found this place and this barn and it was like, aha, this could be it. So yeah, there's obviously a long way to go between where we started and even where we are now and where we're going. So I'm gonna go through that. Our plan is to make this a full four season space. So it's going to be heated in the winter and cooled in the summer. It's going to be the full the full deal. We're going to have nice windows. It's going to be like a finished business space, right? That's my goal. It's going to unfortunately lose some of the barn aesthetic in the process. I'm sorry to people that love for everything to stay the same forever. I love the way the barn looks right now, but it's just not possible to keep it looking the way it looks and have it be functional for the, the whole time, right? So in the spirit of preserving it and living in it, we're gonna bring it up to the 21st century in some ways. Some of the structure, like these beams that you see here going across, they're gonna stay. They're probably pretty much the only thing that's gonna stay as it is now. Everything else is gonna be finished, covered in some way. So I've got what little documentation I have of the process I have here. I'm gonna go through each element of it uh, without being too long-winded about it and give you the lowdown. So. Full disclaimer, I'm not a carpenter. My stepdad is a good carpenter. He's an electrician by trade and he pretty much, you know, engineered all of this stuff. Uh, in a lot of ways, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So please don't be mean to me. I, <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, make this as interesting as I can. But I, it's been a while since we did some of this stuff. I don't remember all the details. Uh, so I'm gonna be general, just your full disclaimer. So the first thing we have here is a view from downstairs and you can see how weird and messed up the ceiling was that somebody actually had to prop it up with basically a stick. Uh, yeah, not, not so good. So that was, you know, we had to get that out of the way. And our plan was basically to replace that with an actual legit beam and post situation that would really 
prop this thing up from the middle. So looking at this room now, the new beam that we put in is right here in the middle going across, right? From, this is technically the long ways. It's almost a square, but it's a little longer this way. So what we had to do was create supports, create posts that sat on the ground embedded in concrete. So we opened up the floor. We cut into the floor, which was very, very shitty. I want to emphasize that. It, it had been uh, broken down from cars running on it. It's very smushy. There's some of the structures falling apart underneath. It's been, uh, it's that concrete board on one part of it. Like, I don't even know how they did that, but there's like, this giant slab of concrete down there. It's, it's a complete mess. So yes, we cut into this old floor. It needed to be done. It's gonna need to be restored in the future regardless. So once we cut into it, we could see some of that structure of what was supporting it. We planned out where we were gonna put our posts. Uh, we opened up the floor. We got in some plastic feet that we could fill with concrete for the posts to sit on. So we got those in nice and level, got it all packed in with dirt, uh, filled them with concrete. We've got tubes to stick in them and filled them with concrete. Um, so yeah, once that was all finished and we we're ready to start putting in our posts and then building our beam. So you can see uh, at the end of the day, we had those posts in, that, that felt like a really big thing. I thought, you know, we were working for like, a week or two at that point and just having that done was huge. We borrowed this cool railroad jack that we used to push uh, the existing structure up so that we could try to find some middle ground and that was you know we consulted with a friend of ours who, who does a lot of this kind of restoration stuff and that was what he said was basically just find the middle ground, find the low point, find the high point and just make everything kind of squeeze into the middle. So we jacked it up where it was low and we shimmed it where it was high. We built that beam on top of those posts. And we built that beam out of three boards that were, I think, two by 12s? Two by 10s, can't remember. But we, we took those, I can go measure, but it doesn't matter. So we, we took those boards, we sandwiched them together, three boards with uh, plywood in between, and then we staggered the seams. Lots of adhesive, lots of screws, the thing is solid as a rock. We basically just built that beam in place, just the two of us. So that was pretty cool. The, the idea being that we didn't need a whole team of people to come in with some antique beam to try to keep the aesthetic because we're, we're not made of money and we're practical people. And you know, the aesthetic of things is not always the most important thing. So we built this beam, it's now supporting the floor. And now the floor actually, when you went up at that point, didn't like wobble around quite so much. Before then you go in there, it was like really, really moved a lot. Uh, it was just little strips of plywood on top of half inch boards that you could see daylight through. It's really sketchy up here. Now, obviously much, much better. So once we had that beam downstairs all set, we started working up here. And the challenge here was that there was such a difference from one side to the other. And between there, it was wavy as all heck. So we put a laser in the middle of the room that was maybe six inches up. And then that laser projected around and it was clear to see that we had maybe six or eight inches of difference from one side to the other. And that had to be accommodated with scribing every piece of wood that went in to make that, that perimeter. So that meant that we had to take, you know, the appropriate width board and then we had to take a pencil, lie it on the floor, get it get it uh, level and then drag that pencil across with a scribe to create like a contour of the floor and then try to get that to rest on the floor so that we could bracket it down and actually have the, the structure of the building supporting the actual floor structure. That was a very, very long process, right? Because we had to go and draw the line and then go and use the saw to cut along the line. And if it was off by a 16th of an inch, we had to go back and take off a hair and then bring it back and forth. There was a lot of that. Uh, it was really, really tedious, but we got it done. The effect at the end was super cool, uh, very, very effective. We doubled up around the perimeter. We made, uh, we actually doubled up for our bays going long ways down the thing. So we made, we've got three bays. So we had two, two long runs down this way. Uh, and then from there it was basically like framing any other floor, although it would kind of float in places, right? So we had to go and ev everywhere that it lined up over the structure of the barn, we had to go and like rivet it down to the floor with uh, with brackets. 
So we got all that set up, joist hangers, all that jazz, basic, basic floor construction. Yeah, and then once we had that skeleton laid out, once we had the floor all, all set in there and framed, then we went and filled it with insulation. We decided to use uh, rock wool insulation because the rodents don't like it. And there's already clearly some rodent activity in this barn, so we wanted to kind of head that off. And also it made sense in terms of the R value and the thickness of our floor. We're only working with like four inches at the skinniest part and like 10 inches at the thickest part. So we, we had some, some considerations there. We had, we used some extra where we had it to kind of patch things in. And yeah, that was, that was really long, long work. That insulation was, boy, I don't envy people who do that for a living. That was like cutting insulation and laying it in there. That was a long, long day uh, or two days. And then we put in our tongue and groove plywood and we got all that set on the floor. And that was a lot of work, uh, but we did it. And one of the things that was sketchy, I should mention, is that we really tried to get this place square. We tried to make the floor square at least. And our parallels, we measured, everything seemed like it was gonna be right, but somewhere along the lines, we kind of goofed up. Uh, so there was, there was a little bit of like, you know, I, we, we eventually just called it the barn effect that, you know, sometimes you measure and it seems like it makes sense, but because the whole structure is so wonky that you ended up just kind of like having to fudge it at the end. Just kind of approximating things at the end. But we got it all in. It's, it's legit. It is so strong. It is so sturdy. And we're now ready to start putting up walls and framing the place. We have the funds for it. We're ready to do it. It's going to happen. And we're super, super excited to share that whole process with you. So I, I hope that that is all interesting. I mean, obviously, like, this place is so awesome, just as it is now. And the only reason I don't have all my workout stuff up here is because we're, we'd have to move it out of the way to do the framing. So uh, as soon as the framing's done and we get this place finished, we're ready to start building climbing walls. So, yeah. so just so you understand our layout here, this whole side of the room, this is all going to be climbing wall, um, bouldering. We're calling it the Boulder Barn as of right now. Uh, this uh, area here, you know, we'll have some crash pads and whatnot. And then this side of the room will be, there's some insulation back there because that's our, our art room on the other side. Uh, poorly insulated art room. Uh, but this is where I'm going to do my work. I will have my squat rack here and all that jazz. And this will be where I do my work. So, yeah, there's really not much to it. We're going to have to lower the ceiling a little bit. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep these ladders because they're cool. And do like monkey bars. Uh, this ceiling's gonna come down a little bit, right? Probably up to up to like that area right about there. Uh, we'll we'll kind of flatten things off. So it will change the vibe in here, which is a little bit sad, but it's got to be done to keep this space functional and keep it thriving and keep it alive and not just let it sit here as like a beautiful but underutilized building. So. I hope that that is a, a good enough explanation of how we got here. It's been a really intimidating video for me to make, honestly, because I feel like I don't have the know-how to really explain it very well, and I've just got so little footage. But I hope that that was interesting. I hope that that gave you guys some, some interesting stuff to think about with this. You can take an old barn and give it a flat floor. That's one takeaway from this, if nothing else. Uh, so yeah, I will keep you all updated and, and much better document the process going forward. So please, if you want to see that, subscribe. If you got any interesting input or you got questions or you want to hate on me for changing the space, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And yeah, that's everything. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you again in our other videos. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.